Hey, Tim DeStasio here. Thanks for joining me for another Psychometric Saturday. We've been talking about return air dew point in the last episode and how we can do some diagnostics based on that. Today, we're going to talk about supply air temperature and dew point and some things that we can learn about the system. In fact, the supply air dry bulb and dew point may be one of the most important air readings that you actually take. So let's take, for example, a perfectly running system. We're going to plot two points on our system. Our red string is going to represent our return temperatures. And so we've got just our basic design temperature of 75 degree dry bulb and a 60 degree dew point. So it is nice and cool in the house. Maybe the humidity is right there at the upper level, but nothing really to be worried about. And then our supply air temperature is going to be somewhere around 50 to 55 degree dry bulb and around 50 to 55 degree dew point. So we're going to be right around right here. Now, here's what happens in the cooling process. We talked about this way back in an early episode. When we start cooling the air down in the cooling coil, we immediately start bringing the dry bulb temperature down. So we are going from right to left here in our chart. Now, once we get to our saturation curve, our air has been cooled down to saturation. It is at 100% relative humidity. And as we continue to go left on the chart, we have no choice but to slide down the curve, the saturation curve. So not only do we keep bringing our dry bulb temperature down, but we also start removing moisture because now we're actually going lower in our chart until we get somewhere around 50 to 55 degree dry bulb on our supply side and somewhere between 50 and 55 degree dew point. Now, one thing to keep in mind when our dry bulb and our dew point are exactly the same temperature, that means that we are at saturation. And that's what we want in a perfect world. We want the supply air temperature that comes off of our unit to be really close to saturation. Now, what happens if we don't read something that's close to what we're seeing here? A nice drop in not only in temperature, but a drop in dew point. Well, I'm going to plot another set of points. So we're going to see what we learn from that. Okay, let's say we're running a service call and it's way too humid in the house. The homeowner says that the temperature is keeping up. It's just really humid and muggy in the house. So we put in our probes in our return, basically reading the average of what it is indoors. We read still 75 degree temperature, a dry bulb. That's pretty normal. That's what we're looking for. But notice our dew point is way up here around 65 degrees dew point. That's going to correspond around 70% relative humidity. So none of those numbers are looking good. Of course, we want to do a duct screening, just like we learned about last episode, where we put our probe right here at the grill, then we move it and we put it here in the return plenum and see if we're picking up a bunch of moisture in our return duct. That can affect the situation greatly. But for this example, let's say that we don't have any difference in our dew point on our return side. If we see this situation right here, we're going to know that our unit is cooling and dehumidifying because we got a nice gap between our two dry bulb temperatures, so we're removing sensible heat. And we also have a nice gap between our dew point, which means that we're removing latent heat. So what could be the problem? Well, we could have a house that's really, really leaky, and we're simply not removing enough moisture for the amount of moisture that is leaking in. So you know that you don't have to go chasing an air conditioning problem. You have a home performance problem. This could also be an indication that our system is oversized because it's actually performing very well. Our supply air is really close to its saturation point, but if the system is oversized, it's going to short cycle and it's not going to run long enough to actually remove that humidity. So how do you know? Well, you've got to observe the system for a little bit. You've got to see whether it gets nice long run cycles. And if that's the case, then yes, you have a home performance problem. The system's not shutting off and yet the home is still leaking in more moisture than it's removed moving, but if it's short cycling, then you know that the system is most likely oversized. You're going to want to follow up with a manual J heat load calculation to verify that because our system is not running long enough to remove the moisture. So there's a lot that we can tell simply by plotting our return and our supply dry bulb and dew point. We're going to have a few more diagnostics next time, but for now, thanks for watching Psychrometric Saturday.